January 1st, 2017. I woke up this morning to an email from one of our subscribers down in Australia, specifically Perth, Australia. Absolutely beautiful city. They've been watching specific webcams, beach cams, sky cams, whatever you want to call them in the Perth area. And we've been monitoring some of these websites um, for quite some time now. And you've seen video footage from this specific camera before. When I reviewed the footage, I was absolutely amazed once again at what I saw. Now, I'm going to share the footage with you. I will also share the direct link to the footage with you. And I started doing a little bit of homework on these webcams that companies use for their websites to put out there and record the sky, the sun, the beach, whatever they're recording. And these cameras are basically pretty sophisticated. There's a lot of options that go with them as far as resolution and things of that nature. And they're not very expensive, about $150. But these cameras are made to be out in the weather. And what I also found is that these cameras do not have a big glass or clear plastic enclosure like some people will say when they try to debunk this type of footage. There's not a water droplet on the camera lens. And these specific cameras are your basic outdoor weatherproof video camera, almost something similar to what you would see on the side of a building that would be like a surveillance camera. And the footage that you're about to see is no type of lens flare. Because if you look up the definition of lens flare, and you take a look at photographs of pink or blue or purple lens flares, you're not going to see a match compared with the footage that you're about to see. So let's just go ahead and take a look at it. Now, this was dated for December 30th, 2016, between the hours of 4 p.m. and 7.45 p.m. And I'm going to go ahead and play the footage completely for you. But right off the bat, where you see my cursor in the upper right-hand corner of the video clip, you can already start to see this anomaly starting to form. And we've seen this on several different webcams associated with this specific website that we've been using. And it's a weather cam website. And I believe they have, oh, probably about 60 weather cams set up through the country of Australia. And these cameras are very well maintained. Very seldom will you see dirt or debris or anything of that nature on the lenses of these cameras. So I'm going to go ahead and play this in its entirety for you. And let's just go ahead. I, I slowed it down just a little bit. But as you can see where my cursor is, this object starts to form near the sun. Now, I'm going to go ahead and just slow it down a little bit more for you. And you can see a reflection here where my cursor is off to the right. Now, in the time-lapsed footage, the object is moving, and it's very faint. So I'm going to go ahead and stop it so you can see all of a sudden. Well, let's just back it up one notch. Now you can see, as the time has gone by, the object is also moving with the sun. Now, I know some people will say, okay, well, if it's moving with the sun, then it has to be a lens flare. Well, I'm afraid that's wrong. Because planets do move with the sun. If they are in a similar orbit, and as the sun is going down, and that is the orbit that they are in, well, yes, they will follow the sun. And as you can clearly see in this photograph, right there where my cursor is, I mean, that's not 
a lens flare. You can see the big, pink, bright lens flares from the sun. This object is being illuminated by the sun. Let's just continue with the footage. Once again, now the sun has actually gone down further, closer to the horizon, and now this object is coming in much more clearly. So if that was a lens flare, it would continue to move with the sun, but it's not. The sun is setting a little faster, and this planet, because that's what I'm going to call it, is right there in the middle of your screen. So let's just go ahead and continue. And I'm just gonna I'm gonna advance the footage by hand. And you can clearly see that as the sun goes down further, it's no longer illuminating the planet like it did minutes before which would be natural. So we're going to go ahead and continue to advance the footage. And it's almost to the point now, you could barely, barely see this object in the background right here as the sun has just about set. So we're going to go ahead and advance even more. Now, as the sun has gone down completely, there's nothing illuminating this object in the sky anymore. So yes, naturally, it would disappear. So we're going to go ahead and play this over again, because I found it absolutely amazing. I took some still photographs of what we're seeing, and you're going to be quite amazed when I show you those photographs, what has actually been captured. And once again, I mean, this is not a lens flare. It's not um, a refraction. And when people use this refraction, phrase. I mean, that's not, that's not refracted light. It's just absolutely amazing what we're capturing on these specific webcams in Australia. Now, as the sun starts to go down, bingo, there is the object right there. Now, it seems to be behind the sun. Well, that right there behind the sun, I don't think it's actually behind the sun because if it was behind the sun, we wouldn't be seeing it at all. However, I think that it is close enough to the earth that we're actually able to see it at certain points when the sun illuminates it with its light. So I'm going to go ahead and just advance this by hand so we can see what is showing up. Now I'm going to just back this up and I want to zoom in a good bit. Well, let's just take a closer look. I mean, you can clearly see that. I mean, here's your pink lens flares and that's a solid object right there. The cursor is literally just pointing right at it. And let's just go ahead and advance this a little more now that we have it blown up. Now it seems to me at that point right there, there's some footage that kind of disappeared. Because if you back this up, you go from this to this, this to this. So it seems to me that there are some of the, the frames of this video. I don't know if they were tampered with, they're missing, but you can't go from that to this in a, in a minute or a few minutes. So I don't know what exactly happened right there at that point. But let's go ahead and keep advancing the footage. And once again, bingo, it's right back. And we're just going to continue. And you're getting, you're getting a very, very clear shot of what is there. So let's keep moving forward. And once again, if this was a lens flare, or a reflection of the, 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 the camera housing, as I've heard before, then how could you have this cloud cover over the solid object? 
I mean, I just don't understand that. If someone has that as their excuse, then I'd like for you to prove to me how this cloud cover is going to cover a light anomaly, a lens flare. So let's keep on advancing the, uh, the film. Now here, it becomes more visible once again, and you could see the sun is shining on this object. Once again, there's some cloud cover at the base and off to the right. Let's advance it some more. And once again, the cloud cover forms over the object. And here we have a much thicker cloud and you could barely see the top part of this object. But this cloud totally eclipses this object. And let's move forward. Once again, you have extreme cloud cover, the brightness of the sun. And you could see the object right here. Now here, once again, <coughs> excuse me, you can see the object <clears throat> very clearly. We'll keep advancing this. Now, I'm seeing this object right here. Now, there is some lens flare right here and above the sun and off to the, off to the left. However, this object is still here. And it's not quite moving directly with the sun. So let's continue advancing. You can see it. There's the bottom. It's being covered by the brightness and the lens flare of the sun. It seems to be that this is the same striped planet that we've seen in other footage. No, I do not think that this is planet Nibiru. And it's definitely not Nemesis the Brown Dwarf. But if you've read about Planet X Nibiru, the nemesis solar system it is a mini solar system it has more than one planet now, i know the names of some of the planets helion is one of the planets that was named it is supposed to be a large gas giant and the other planet is arboda another gas giant and this mini solar system is supposed to have several moons that are attached to these other planets. So what is the possibility that we are actually seeing one of these other planets? Because we know that that is not Nibiru. So let's keep advancing this. Once again, you continue to see the object. <coughs> Excuse me. So if this was a lens flare or some type of reflection from the camera housing as the sun would be going down this object would literally be following the sun as one complete as one complete object the sun and this object the reflection whatever you want to call it but it is maintaining a position in the sky off in the distance it's faint but it, it is there Now, once again, clouds pass right over it, and more clouds continue to pass right over it. 
and you can still barely see it right here in the sky we'll just keep on advancing Now, through the time lapse, the object is now over here. You can clearly see it. It seems to be striped. Let's keep advancing. Once again, you can clearly see the planet is right above the sun. Now, not directly on top of it, but it is clearly right here. We're going to keep on advancing. And we're going to reduce the, uh, the zoom here just a bit. We're going to keep advancing this. Now, I'm going to back this up just a bit. In this, in this time lapse, you can see this object. It's right about here. Now, I thought to myself, okay, is, is that just, you know, a lens flare of some kind? Well, no, I don't think it's a lens flare because you're looking at all the lens flares, the pink lens flares protruding out of the top of the sun. They're pink. That's what a lens flare is. So let's just keep on moving forward. Now, as the sun is basically pulsating its light as it is going down below the horizon, you're going you're gonna to see the object again. It's right here. Let's keep on moving forward. Now, just in that frame, the sun goes down a little more, and a little more of this object is shown right there. And some of these, uh, some of these, when I stop this here, some of this footage is uh, absolutely amazing. Once again, you can see the pink lens flares, but you can also see a perfectly spherical object, a round planet right there. The sun is illuminating it. That's why you're able to see it in this footage. And I've had people ask, well, why aren't the people on the ground able to see this. Well, I don't know about you, but I can't stare directly at the sun with my eyes. Well, you, you'll go blind. You'll damage your eyes. But when you're able to view this, this type of uh, uh, photographs and video, you're viewing it through a camera, a video camera. So now you have the opportunity to actually see what the camera is seeing. Let's just continue. I mean, there you go, folks. Let's just zoom into that. Now, are you thinking that might be a reflection of the sun? The sun is just producing this light anomaly in the skies over Perth, Australia. Well, everybody's entitled to their own opinion. My personal opinion, our sun is and has been illuminating these objects for quite some time. If you don't investigate and research and try to find the information, well, it's just going to pass by and you're not ever going to see it. But I know I spend countless hours investigating and trying to find the information. And sooner or later, you're going to stumble onto it. 
And these cameras down in Australia have been providing a wealth of information. The same goes for the camera down at Bondi Beach, another beautiful area of Australia. And absolutely beautiful footage, beautiful evidence that there is something else other than the planets that we were taught about in our solar system. There it is, clear as a bell. I mean, if you think that's something else, let me know what you think. Because, I mean, you could clearly see, here's, here's the sun right here. It's very small, very small. Look at the size of this object. So obviously the sun is definitely producing enough light to literally show us this planet. Now again, I don't think that that is our beloved planet X or Nibiru, but it's hard for us to really say what is actually out there in the solar system. You know as well as I do, the only people that actually hold the answers are the world governments, NASA, other space agencies. Don't let them fool you. They have absolute 100% proof of what we're looking at. So there's no doubt about it. All of our inner planets in the solar system are heating up. I mean, let's just take a look at Venus. Everyone has been seeing Venus in the, in the early nighttime sky. It's so bright that now it's being mistaken for a star. Venus should be at about a 60% luminosity, meaning you should only be able to see a crested Venus showing you about 60% of the planet. But when you look up in the sky at about 5 p.m. and you start to see it coming in, it gets brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter. And it looks completely 100% illuminated, like a full moon. What's doing that to Venus? No one has answered that question for me yet. But anyways, I took a few still shots of this object and I turned this one into black and white and let's just zoom in a little bit there's your object and in the original photograph the screenshot you could barely barely see that object and what I did with this photograph is I basically turned down the light I softened up the photograph so the intense rays of the sun were at a minimum, therefore providing me with a clearer shot and a clearer view of what was in the right-hand corner of this screen. And if you think that's a lens flare, well, you better look up the definition of lens flare, and you might want to do a little homework on that, because that object in the upper right-hand part of your screen is not a lens flare, folks. That's a large spherical object, call it what you want, name it what you want, but it doesn't belong in our solar system. It just doesn't. You could sit here and stare at the screen all day long. You could think of a thousand excuses, but your excuses aren't going to hold water. And it's absolutely an amazing capture. I mean, I wish there was some way that we could make this crystal clear. I don't have that type of technology. I'd like to hear your opinions.
Please don't use the word lens flare because it is not a lens flare. For everybody, you know, especially the, the people that try to debunk these videos, that's pretty much the only excuse that they can come up with. They yell lens flare, lens flare. Light refraction, light reflection. Listen, it's time to get some other excuses, some educated excuses to use because your lens flare excuse doesn't add up. It doesn't make sense. Atmospheric phenomenon, I've heard that plenty of times. Okay, well, you explain to me what type of atmospheric phenomenon produces what you're seeing on your screen. Because I've looked, I've looked at uh, many articles written by scientists, meteorologists, climatologists. Atmospheric phenomenon does not apply to what you're seeing on your screen. What you're seeing on your screen is an object in our solar system that is very large and the sun is sharing its light to provide us with some visible evidence. Hmm. I'd like to thank our subscriber that sent this in. Absolutely, absolutely fantastic find. I haven't had a lot of time to uh, stay on this, this weather cam website as of lately, but I think I'm going to start paying more attention to what's going on here because once again, it has provided us with a wealth of video and still photographs. And I'm sorry. I mean, I'm just going to have to say that, you know, it is my belief, my belief, that is a planet clear as a bell and the sun is reflecting its own light on that planet to illuminate it and allow you to see it today, January 1st, 2017. I did take a few more photographs of the object. But this one just literally takes the cake. I mean, that's a, that's a pretty awesome photograph. But we will stay on top of these webcams down there in Australia. And I will leave a link directly to the homepage. And I'll leave a link to this specific video capture. And go back, take a look at the video yourself, take a look at the footage yourself, and see what you can come up with. I can't, I can't think of any other excuses other than what I'm seeing is a large planetary object in the skies. And when I say in the skies, folks, I'm not talking up there with, you know, the birds. This object is clearly in outer space. Uh, probably somewhere within our inner solar system. It has to be somewhat close by and very large for it to appear that large in this video footage. But anyways, we will continue each and every day with our investigations. And if you come up with any photographs or great video and you'd like to send it in, our email address is Nibiru Planet X 2016 at gmail.com. That email address is found in the description box under the video. I'd love to hear from you. If you have comments on what you're seeing today in this video, leave your comments in the, uh, the comment section under the video. And we're going to stay in search of until we find the answers. And I truly don't think that government agencies, space agencies, I just don't foresee them coming right out and, and telling the world that the possibilities of a smaller solar system interacting with our solar system is what we're seeing. They'll continue to cover it up. They'll cover it up to the very end. Absolutely no doubt. But anyways, folks, all of our subscribers and viewers, I'd like to wish all of you a very happy New Year's Day, January 1st, 2017. And I actually think that over the next several months, I think we're going to start to see a lot of changes. And 
we may also capture a lot of these changes, what's occurring in our skies. We're going to capture these on video. We're going to get these in photographs because now more than ever, people around the world are looking up into the skies. And like I always say, keep an eye in the sky. If you see something that looks abnormal, that doesn't look right, hey, listen, everybody has a cell phone. They may not have the most sophisticated cameras, but they're sophisticated enough for you to point that camera into the sky, zoom into what you're looking at, and snap that photograph. And get it into us. Let us take a look at it. Absolutely amazing. Okay, folks, I'll be back with another report later on today. We did have a lot of earthquake activity in the state of California here in the United States. And I'm going to be doing a video on that. And uh, we also have another very large coronal hole that is forming and has been forming and will be turning towards Earth in the next three to five days, I believe. And since we're here, we can go ahead and just take a look at it and see what's happening with this big monster because it is a very, very large coronal hole. And there she is. As you can see the date below here, January 1st, 2017. This is a 48-hour run of video. And this coronal hole is very large. This is the one that's just passing Earth. It's small. It's really not doing anything. We've had some earthquakes, but nothing major. Nothing over a magnitude 5, I believe. But this big monster here that's forming literally is connecting with the coronal hole that was at the base of the sun. So we're definitely going to be watching this over the next three to five days, possibly the next week. So with that said, we'll be back with an earthquake update in a few hours. If you're not subscribed to the Nibiru channel, make sure you subscribe. If you've not set up your notifications, for our channel to get updates on your videos. After you watch this video, move over to the little subscribe icon, go to the bell, click on the bell, set your notifications up so you can keep yourself updated. Happy New Year's. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Nibiru channel. It is January 1st, 2017. I woke up this morning to an email from one of our subscribers down in Australia. Specifically, Perth, Australia, absolutely beautiful city. They've been watching specific webcams, beach cams, sky cams, whatever you want to call them, in the Perth area. And we've been monitoring some of these websites um, for quite some time now. And you've seen video footage from this specific camera before. When I reviewed the footage, I was absolutely amazed once again at what I saw. Now, I'm going to share the footage with you. I will also share the direct link to the footage with you. And I started doing a little bit of homework on these webcams that companies use for their websites to put out there and record the sky, the sun, the beach, whatever they're recording. And these cameras are basically pretty sophisticated. There's a lot of options that go with them as far as resolution and things of that nature. And they're not very expensive, about $150. But these cameras are made to be out in the weather. And what I also found is that these cameras do not have a big glass or clear plastic enclosure like some people will say when they try to debunk this type of footage. There's not a water droplet on the camera lens. And these specific cameras are your basic outdoor weatherproof video camera, almost something similar to what you would see on the side of a building that would be like a surveillance camera. 
And the footage that you're about to see is no type of lens flare. Because if you look up the definition of lens flare and you take a look at photographs of pink or blue or purple lens flares, you're not going to see a match compared with the footage that you're about to see. So let's just go ahead and take a look at it. Now, this was dated for December 30th, 2016, between the hours of 4 p.m. and 7.45 p.m. And I'm going to go ahead and play the footage completely for you. But right off the bat, where you see my cursor in the upper right-hand corner of the video clip, you can already start to see this anomaly starting to form. And we've seen this on several different webcams associated with this specific website that we've been using. And it's a weather cam website. And I believe they have, oh, probably about 60 weather cams set up through the country of Australia. And these cameras are very well maintained. Very seldom will you see dirt or debris or anything of that nature on the lenses of these cameras. So I'm going to go ahead and play this in its entirety for you. And let's just go ahead. I, I slowed it down just a little bit. But as you can see where my cursor is, this object starts to form near the sun. Now, I'm going to go ahead and just slow it down a little bit more for you. And you can see a reflection here where my cursor is off to the right. Now, in the time-lapsed footage, the object is moving, and it's very faint. So I'm going to go ahead and stop it so you can see all of a sudden. Well, let's just back it up one notch. Now you can see, as the time has gone by, the object is also moving with the sun. Now, I know some people will say, okay, well, if it's moving with the sun, then it has to be a lens flare. Well, I'm afraid that's wrong. Because planets do move with the sun. If they are in a similar orbit, and as the sun is going down, and that is the orbit that they are in, well, yes.